What is included in the financial projections as part of a business plan? Well, the financial projections generally consist of multiple financial statements. Number one, the income statement or profit and loss statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flow. In reality, however, the primary financial statement when it comes to startup ventures, new businesses, are your projections with regard to the income statement. That generally is everything. The balance sheet and the statement of cash flow generally are far less important during the planning process. So with that being said, we're going to take a specific look at the income statement and what is included in there as part of creating financial projections. Well, to begin with, you're going to need to make a lot of assumptions. Generally, those assumptions are related to your sales and the price that you're going to charge for your sales. That is the hourly rate for services or the profit margin you include for goods based upon for every dollar of good value you sell. The average profit margin may be 10 percent, 15 percent. These assumptions are going to allow you to estimate your revenue in the future based upon a dollar value of sales and hopefully it will be consistent across so if you say I go from selling a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars and I'm making 15 percent well I went from making fifteen dollars to a hundred and fifty dollars of profit margin so it allows you to project along those lines without projecting specific breakdown of sales of goods or items, um, that type of thing. Now, it's very common that businesses have a combination of services and goods that supply uh, their revenue uh, and have different profit margins attached to them. Well, you'll need to make assumptions about this as well, but the more uh, unitized you can get it. That is where you can create a single unit variable that scales up or represents the profit margin associated with a particular sale, whether it's an hour, hour of labor or a product, uh, then you'll be able to project off of those. And then your cost, your cost for everything that you're going to need. You've identified all of the tasks and functions that take place along the value chain, all of the equipment necessary and things like that you're going to need to make some estimates of what all this is going to cost. Some of the equipment, some of the softwares, some of the uh, hourly rates of employees and things like that. They're going to, you're going to have to make assumptions about those. You may not be able to hire on people at the rates you believe or acquire equipment at the cost that you suspect. So you're going to have to make general assumptions about these and again this is going to help you lay out the cost because the income statement is made up really of two things revenue and costs one minus the other generally equals your profit for that period okay so that's what we're trying to arrive at you're also going to need to identify what are the costs that must be incurred before you can even get started okay what are all of the equipment needs personnel needs, uh, location office, uh, things like that, training, licensures, whatever goes into getting the business started, operations rolling. Okay. Next, you're going to identify your fixed costs, the things that you're going to occur as a cost no matter what. These things are usually things like a mortgage or rent for an office, um, repayment of a loan, equipment payments, things of that nature, things that are going to remain the same or constant whether you make any sales or no. Okay, so anything like subscriptions would also go in there, um, annual payments for licensure, things like that. You're going to incur those whether you have one customer or client or a million customers and clients. So identify what those fixed costs are. Now your fixed costs may ramp up as you acquire more equipment or more obligations uh, as your business grows. So remember this, so you, to the extent that you can estimate as closely as possible the cost at a given stage, that's going to make all the difference. So making assumptions up front is very important. And then your variable cost. This cost you're going to relate very closely to the dollar value of sales again, just like you're going to do with revenue. So if you say your profit margin is going to be 15% on every dollar of sales, well, that means the total cost that you occur for those 
sales is 85%. Okay. Now, 40% of those may be fixed cost across the board. And the fixed cost, obviously, they say the same. So that's not going to be, again, part of the uh, variable cost, which escalate, go up or down based upon the number of sales. So if I have rent, I have to pay that regardless. If I have one sale, if I have a million. But if I, I'm selling products and each product costs me $2 to sell and I sell it for $10 and I make $8 of profit by selling that item, well, I only incur that $2 of cost if I sell the item. And I know there's an argument that you have some inventory on hand that you've already purchased. But let's just assume you're only expending that $2. You don't have it anymore. You don't have that $2 in value of inventory anymore until you make a sale. So for every sale, one variable cost is $2 for the cost of goods that you sold. Also, you may have a sales commission of 10%. All of a sudden, that's another dollar in the process. So you're adding up what are all the variable costs and you can, if you can state those as a percentage of the value of sales or a percentage of hour of service, it allows you to more accurately project what your costs are going to be for whatever given level of sales. So if you've unitized this in this way, identified fixed and variable costs as percentages uh, across the board based upon the value of sales or the revenue from sales activity, then once again, you're just really projecting across the board your sales, your total revenue. And then accordingly, you'll have a line for fixed costs and then you'll have an escalating line for variable costs based upon sales. And at some point, your fixed costs will bump up as you acquire more equipment and more obligations like that. And your variable costs will just continue to ramp in line with your sales. Now, as you have more and more sales, perhaps the percentage of uh, that sale that constitutes a variable cost will go down because of what we call economies of scale or that you, you buy raw materials in bulk. So you get a, a discount, for example, or you provide services at such a high volume and high rate, it costs you less per hour of service to provide those services. So that's what you're doing. And so as you project your revenue, you will once again identify the, the revenue associated with it from sales and any breakdown between product and service, however you derive your value, and then you'll estimate the cost accordingly. After you've done all that, you have a pretty valid uh, projection of how your company is going to perform. You break that down by year. Usually you project out for two to three years. And the first year is broken down by months. The second year is broken down by quarters. And the third year is just as stated as performance for the year. Okay. Uh, then you are going to identify your sources of financing to cover whatever losses or costs you incur until you hit the break-even point. The break-even point is generally the point at which revenue is sufficient to cover the cost of operation and all costs. Now, normally it's a year or two or three before a business hits that point. They incur losses up until that point. So you have to have resources sufficient to meet those needs. Oftentimes this comes from loans, personal investment in the business or company, or you receive funds from investors. Okay, uh, there are some other forms like uh, grants and things like that, particularly for nonprofits. Uh, but your sources of finances are generally uh, grouped together that way. But you're going to need to identify where you're going to get the money or where you plan to get the money to cover all of those costs up until you hit the break even point. Which brings us to the last point. You'll want to include some metrics in there. What is your break even point? When will you hit it? Will it be in year three, year two, what quarter or what month? And then if you're pitching to investors and you're asking for their money in exchange for the interest in the business, you'll want to give them some form of net present value calculation. That is, what is the present value of future cash flows that they will receive as an owner in exchange for their ownership interest in exchange for their investment? And um, this is it. These are all the things that are generally included within the financial projections portion of the business plan.